Easy now, folks. To cut this story a little bit shorter, I was losing some fish recently. It wasn't immediately obvious what the problem was. The first death of an older fish, I wasn't too concerned, but after a couple more deaths, I started to look for causes. Embarrassingly enough, it ended up being one of the nastiest things a fish can get and one of the last things I looked for. I'm still not sure how I got it into the tank, but it ended up that it was Camelanus worms. They are dark needle shaped worms coming out of the anus of the fish. A wee bit shorter than in my anatomically correct diagram here. But this is where you'll see them and when it gets bad you start to see a clutch of them hanging out. They look incredibly alien at this stage and really nasty. By now your fish will be suffering and it'll be for your whole tank if not all your tanks if you use the same equipment between them and don't wash your hands between maintaining each tank. They spread rapidly and they are relentless and one of the problems we have in the UK is two of the most effective medications for battling them are not easily available. I searched long and hard and even contacted a couple of vets that weren't too helpful. I was looking for fenbendazole or levamisole, which are basically wormers for bigger animals like sheep and dogs. But all my searches kept coming back fruitless. These things are not readily available in the UK. However, a friend of mine said that he knew of a product that contained one of these, so I ordered a few boxes. And this is it, Isha NDX. It comes already suspended in a solution, which comes in a bottle that's easy to applicate. It says on the label here that it treats, crucially for us, camelanus worms, but also other round worms, planaria, stuff like that. It says a wee bit further down under the composition, active ingredients, 54 milligram of levamisole, Hydrochloridium, which is levamisole hydrochloride, exactly the thing we're looking for. Obviously, if you're considering using it yourself, please fully read the label before you do. Just to make sure that it is appropriate for what you're dealing with and you know how to handle it right. First thing we're going to do though is remove any purigen or carbon that might interfere with the medication or the medication might interfere with. If you have a filter that uses those polycarbon pads you'll need to take those out. But then they've made it pretty simple for us, couldn't be any easier. Hold the bottle upside down and it's one drop per litre of water. I chose to drip mine into the flow of the filter because if it's being dropped into a current stream you're going to make sure it's mixing around the tank a bit more effectively. That's going to make sure it's reaching everywhere we want it to get to. And then with most medications, I tend to turn the light off because some medications can be light sensitive. It didn't recommend that on my leaflet, but it can't hurt, hey? The leaflet then recommends starting to remove the medication after 24 hours. I did find some research that said that Levamisole works best after three days of contact time though, so... I left mine for three days, but you guys choose what you want to do with your aquarium. All I can say is there didn't seem to be any negative effects for my fish and my tank for leaving it for three days. Whichever you choose, Levamisole is not actually going to kill the worms though. All it does is paralyzes them. So we need to keep feeding our fish a quality diet make sure they're flushing the systems and therefore the paralysed worms with them. What will happen then is obviously the worms will sink down to the bottom of the tank, so we need to start doing some really good gravel vacking. We want to vac every area of the bottom that the worms could have landed on. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is the fish might gobble them up, they'll recover from their paralysis and all that's going to happen is the cycle's going to start again. We've wasted our money on medication and put our fish and tank for a bit of stress that it didn't need. So we need to gravel vac as thoroughly as we can 
and then discard the wastewater in as irresponsible a manner as we can. We don't want these worms getting into our water systems or unintentionally reinfecting elsewhere, so we need to be as careful as we can, eh? We would need to disinfect any buckets or equipment that we're going to use again and keep on top of our own personal hygiene. Now these worms go through a life cycle and the medication won't affect every stage of that cycle. Therefore we need to come back in two weeks and repeat the whole process to ensure we thoroughly eradicate these worms from our aquariums. What I'll say is it worked for me when I thought I was facing a particularly hopeless situation and I'm delighted that it did too. I have ram's horn, Malaysian trumpet snails, amano and cherry shrimp in this tank that all appear to handle the process fine. No negative effects on them at all. I do feel like the wood shrimp were struggling a little bit so maybe keep an eye on that if you're intending to use this medication and you keep those. Just do your own research on the effects of anything that you've got in the tank and make sure that they're going to be fine and you should be good. The NDX did not stain my rocks or my gravel, didn't stain the silicone or anything like that, no worries there. It didn't taint the water at all, although this shot looks kind of different just for the way the light is, but if you're going to switch the light off anyway for your 24 hours or your three days, whichever you go for, shouldn't really make any difference there. You'd rather have your lights off for a couple of days and get this sorted. Your plants should survive a couple of days without the light on and it won't bother the fish at all. They're only going to be much happier and healthier for this. Once we've done our gravel vacuuming, just to make sure that the medication is fully out of the system, we can use carbon, which is one of the only real times that I suggest using carbon in an aquarium. The rest of the time, I think it's more hassle than it's worth, but it is right good for getting rid of any traces of excess medication. So we can buy it loose like this. You would just pour an amount into a mesh filter bag or even a pair of what do you call them pantyhose or tights if you've got any of those laying about stick that in your filter and it will draw the medication up alternatively you can get them pre-packaged the likes of the fluval flex have handy wee pouches available whether you use them for that or not they're quite handy to have about for instance is just like this pop them in your filter pull them out when you're done with them and get rid of them they recommend using the carbon or doing a 50% water change, although not everybody's happy to do that, so I reckon the carbon's a good way to go. So there we have it, Isha NDX, a medication that contains Levamisol, which, as I said, was very, very hard to identify in the UK. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming it's because you need this information, in which case I hope it helps. Or if you know of other products, leave them in the comments below and we'll help each other out as usual, eh? Right, I'm out. Later, 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 later.